Is Bitcoin going to surpass $100,000? Is it all just a hype? Is it possible that it takes another decade before we see it reach that price? It's the million dollar question, right? Traders all over the world are trying to estimate the market's top. For years now, we're analyzing Bitcoin's market cycles, trying to find an answer where the next top could be and when it might happen, so we can be prepared and position ourselves accordingly. There is a theory circulating on the internet. You might have heard about it. It's the 5.3 theory that a guy called Steve is uh, currently pushing and I already posted a response video on that but seeing the comments on my video it seems I need to do it again so here we go let's get started Welcome to today's episode of Crypto Corner, everyone, your go-to spot for all things crypto. My name is OJ, crypto analyst since 2016, and for a second time now, I will scrutinize the infamous 5.3 theory, according to which we won't see Bitcoin above 100,000 for more than a decade. But not only that, I will also show you a very simple indicator that is very successful in marking the top of the cycle, and it worked perfectly for every cycle so far. So make sure to stick around. But first, according to Steve, this guy here, this is his channel. It's uh, pretty much clickbait videos that aim to get you into his uh, paid courses. But his theory claims that Bitcoin will not get to 100,000 this cycle, not even the next one, nor even the one after. But most likely, and these are his words, not mine, we will have a 10-year bear cycle that might have started already in 2021 and it will last for the whole of the 20s uh, where Bitcoin will be correlated with the stock market, stay in a bear trend and won't get above 100,000. Scary, right? The theory is based on projected estimate that with each cycle, we see a diminishing ROI of Bitcoin by the power of 5.3. In other words, taking the ROI of the previous cycle Divide it by 5.3 and you get the ROI of the next cycle. You then take the bottom price of the following cycle and project that ROI to estimate where the top will be. And this way you get to the dreaded prospects of Bitcoin staying below $100,000 for not only this cycle, but the upcoming next cycles too. I disagree with this and I will explain why, but let's look at uh, his video here, this one, the first one, where he breaks down the theory so I can respond to what we are presented with. All right, here we go. Let's get started. Everyone is wrong about Bitcoin 100K in 2024, and I'm about to break it down with cold, hard facts. We talk about just the facts in Bitcoins, no emotional opinions, cold, hard facts, what we have in front of us are one, two, three, four green. Okay, so what he's marked here, uh, the bull cycles. We have four bull cycles. They're marked in green with green boxes. What he's done is he's estimating, uh, he's only looking at the bull cycles, the bull runs. So he's starting from the uh, absolute bottom of the previous cycle, the bear cycle. You know that I don't count the cycles the same way. Uh, for me, the absolute bottom of a cycle is not the start of the next cycle. It's actually the peak of the bear cycle. Then we have a relief rally and, uh, and we are in accumulation phase for the next cycle. The bull rally actually starts a little bit later, but that is irrelevant. I'm going to stick to how he is marking here. So we're talking about bull cycles only. And we're starting from the absolute bottom of the bear cycle and we are ending at the absolute top of the bull cycle so from peak bottom to peak top boxes these four green boxes represent the entire run from the bottom of the market to the top and those of you who have seen me break this down we're about to pair it with a couple other charts but for those of you who haven't here is the math. What we've done is we've taken our first market cycle from our bottom all the way up to the top and we have our huge percentage, right? Plug this number into your calculator and divide by 5.3. When you divide by 5.3, it's gonna tell you the next market cycle goes up around 60,000%. So you simply go to the bottom of the next market cycle and you go up 60,000%. That's where the Bitcoin ended up topping years later so this it's amazing isn't it projected out years in advance of when the next market cycle was going to stop 
But it doesn't stop there. I mean, it was a little bit over 60,000%, but... You divide that by 5.3, it projected out the next market cycle of the percentage gain that the next market cycle will get from the bottom of the next market cycle all the way to the top. It projected out that the next market cycle will gain something around 11,442%. Go ahead. Okay, and let's go to the next cycle. And then it becomes, well, okay, well, that was three market cycles in a row. There's no way it's going to get the next one. Well, 11,442, go ahead and plug it into your calculator, divided by 5.3. That will tell you it projected out years in advance what the next market cycle will be for Bitcoin when nobody wanted to believe it. And again, nobody has discovered this theory. We are the first people to discover this 5.3 theory. It's remarkable, but it's not good news. And the other question, Steve, what happens a couple cycles from now? It says that Bitcoin will never get above 100K. I'm going to get into that too. The two most widely asked questions. And again, we're going to pair this with another chart as well. So you take this 11,442 and you say, that's oh, never going to happen. Well, it projected that the next market cycle years from now would be 2,200% which it was exactly 2,200%, including our double top. Bitcoin tries to trick the 5.3 theory. It's not possible. You go right from the bottom right to the top. And you may say, okay, well, this is fascinating. I've never seen anything like this. What does it tell that our next market cycle is going to be? Well, if you take 2,200%, you divide that by 5.3, it's something like 413, 416%. So you simply go down to our market cycle low, which is here, and you go up 400 and change, 400 and some odd percent of where we were. And it brings us up, up into this area, right? Where I need okay. to... And now this area is basically around 77, 78,000, let's call it 80,000, which was my prediction for uh, the end of this year. So this year, 2024, I agree. 80,000 sounds reasonable to me. I'm not going to play the, the full video, so I'll have to skip. Again, I don't really want to uh, run into copyright infringement or anything like that. Uh, you can watch the full video if you want, but this is literally the estimate. And by the way, uh, this is the chart that I have here. And what I'm doing, I'm actually going into uh, a lot of detail here. I'm going, I'm really zooming in here, zooming in to the maximum possible so that I can mark exactly where these wicks of candles are going up. And then I'm drawing this, in my case, red boxes rather than green boxes, but it's the same thing. I'm marking the same cycles as he does. But before I go into that, let me just quickly show you where exactly is that number going if we are to estimate the same thing, which is uh, from the bottom of the market, which was here. So let's go to this week and I'm going to pull up a price label. 15,483 is showing me. Actually, no, I'm not. I need to zoom in a little bit more. So let me be absolutely precise here. Okay. And you see, as you zoom in, you realize that you could be quite off. And uh, to be honest, every, uh, you know, even just a, a couple of hundred dollars change could be uh, quite a significant one for when we're estimating percentage. So from this price point, I'm going to have to estimate uh, 400, what was it? It's 415%. Uh, there we go, 80,000. The theory predicts 80,000 for Bitcoin throughout this cycle. 5.3, and then we're, we're at almost no percent. Well, what I've said many, many times is after this market cycle that we're in right now, it might be a period of around 10 years where Bitcoin has to recover. It's done this many, many times in the stock market, right? Where there was period. It's, it's done. Bitcoin has not done this in the stock market. Um, what he's talking about is now a comparison between what stock, stock market has done over the last hundred years, um, more or less. He's, we're looking at 1930s here and how we have a 12 year a consolidation and in fact actually a bearish 
uh, not the whole uh, duration of uh, this 12 years is a bearish momentum, but a big chunk of it, like more than half of it, is a bearish momentum. So we're looking at a, a five, six years of a bear cycle and a few years of a bull cycle within a larger consolidation cycle. And also I want to point out that Steve is a decent trader. I'm not saying that he's full of, you know, crap or that everything he does is uh, nonsense or is, is wrong or anything like that. He uses a lot of indicators. Sometimes his charts are very messy. I looked at some of his videos so that I have an idea, you know, what's his trading style and everything. Uh, but he is looking at different indicators and a lot of the times he is quite correct with his estimates. However, he is wrong about Bitcoin, and I'm going to show you why, but let's just finish with the theory. But the inevitable is coming. We haven't had one of these cycles, which happens every 30 or 40 years in, in a while, right? We've had three of them, which it took 10 plus years to recover. And Bitcoin is likely going to go into that with the stock market, into one of these cycles. Why? Why should it? Why, when Bitcoin is not correlated to the stock market, why all of a sudden now we're going to correlate to the stock market? In fact, there was a period of time uh, throughout 2022 where Bitcoin was very correlated with the tech stocks. But even that's no longer the case. There was a period of time when Bitcoin was correlated to gold for a short period. But if we look at the full history of Bitcoin, and we compare it to stocks or uh, commodities or anything else, Bitcoin is not correlated in the bigger picture. Bitcoin is not correlated to any of these assets. This is why many people are now looking into expanding their portfolios and diversifying and adding Bitcoin, especially with the ETF, because it is a, a non-correlated asset. So it is in fact a hedge. Cycles that it takes us multiple years to cover it might even have started in may of 2021 it might be all of the 2020s that bitcoin doesn't reach above 100k however this 5.3 theory in my opinion it would reset and we would start this whole cycle over this is just a broader cycle of like 15 ish years of bitcoin which in 10 years from now we'll look back and say oh that 15 year period was one cycle and then it repeated. That's what's more than likely going to happen with Bitcoin. But more than likely. We have to finish this nah. cycle. And then we need the next cycle to be a bunch of garbage, which it probably will, including the stock market. And then the next cycle after that might even also be garbage. And then the next cycle after that would probably. Be OK, now where this where I disagree with this theory is um, that there are other factors that you have to take into account, like fundamentals rather than only looking at TA. TA is great. I do TA all the time, technical analysis. It is uh, very accurate most of the time. But if you really want to be accurate about predictions in the future, which is what he's doing, because he's not talking about the short term anymore. For the short term, TA can be very precise. For the long term, you have to get in other um, factors in. You have to look into fundamentals. Bitcoin's scarcity. Is something that you can't ignore. Uh, this is not the stock market. Stock market, first of all, is a we're not. He's not comparing crypto markets to stock market. He's comparing Bitcoin specifically to the whole stock market. He's not comparing it to one stock, but the whole stock market. So this is a wrong comparison to begin with, because you cannot compare one asset with a basket of uh, all of the other assets in the stock market. Uh, the stock market has so many different companies. Some of them are great. Some of them are absolute rubbish. Bitcoin is only one asset. You can uh, compare it to gold. We don't really know exactly what is the scarcity of gold. How much more is there left? Oil. We don't really know what is the scarcity of oil. We keep mining it. So um, what is the scarcity of Bitcoin? We know. It is 21 million, out of which at least a couple of million, uh, up to 4 million, is already assumed to be lost. So we're probably working with less than 19 million. And, and we've already mined 90% of it. And we know exactly how much is left to mine. And we know exactly what is the time frame for that. It's over 100 years, just over 100 years from now. So we still have 100 years left to mine the rest of the Bitcoin. 
all of the Bitcoin, the full supply. Total supply, limited, fixed, that's it. Now, let me show you my estimates. I'm going to uh, go backwards here because um, I find that his theory really works for the last couple of cycles, but then it falls apart. So this is the last cycle. 68,996 was our top according to TradingView and I really zoomed in here. I zoomed all the way to the very top and I placed this uh, price label so that I can be very precise with my boxes, how I'm drawing my boxes because when you're calculating percentages, even just a little bit of a difference could actually be quite a significant percentage. So I zoomed up all the way into here and I went also to the bottom of this, which was at 3000 and it was in uh, 2019, was it? Or 20, December 2018. Uh, and let me do it again in case I, I didn't do it correctly. I can see that actually I did not do it very, very precisely. So let's do this together. Okay, here is the label and I'm gonna zoom even more because as I zoom in more, I can still see that I'm a little bit off. So let's do this. Okay, there we go. So here we're looking at 2115%. Let's go back to his video and see what is his percentage. Okay, so his percentage is 2200% and I'm getting 2115%. So uh, that's a little bit of a discrepancy here, but overall it is very much the same, right? And uh, let's estimate this one here. Again, I went all the way up to this price here at 19,804. This is our market top on the previous cycle back in December 2017. And I've gone all the way down to the market bottom of the previous cycle, which is at $162 exactly and i really zoomed in here so i'm not going to waste your time doing it again but i really zoomed in this is the absolute market bottom of the previous cycle so this is what i'm getting 12,125 percent for this market cycle 12,125 what's he talking about 11,442 so we already have a discrepancy here and um I don't know whether it's because he is not being as precise as I am, but I am being very, very precise. As I showed you, I am zooming in all the way until I can see exactly the top or the bottom of these wicks so that I don't make any mistakes. Because when you're making a theory like that, especially when you're showing me calculations that go absolute, this 11,442% according to his calculation came exactly precise to the very digit and uh, in fact it's not as precise as we can see but let's just estimate it from here 12,125 divided by 5.3 we're looking at 2,287 percent I'm getting 2,115 very precise huh? I mean it is very close and then from this if I divide again by 5.3 i'm getting 431 he got 415 but it's very much the same thing even if we assume 431 that will take us to about 81 82 000. so again if we are looking at one or two thousand differences that's that's not really a big difference so this is where the theory works this is why i'm starting backwards because it actually works with uh, this last cycle and I think it worked with the previous cycle. So in the previous cycle, I got 60,500% gains. So let's estimate 60,500 and is it an eight and nine, 509 divided by 5.3. It gives me 11,416. I got 12,125. He got 11,442. So none of us is getting exactly the, the same number, but it is very close. So we can assume that this is also a correct number. 
What I have a problem with, and I still do, I had it in the previous video, in my previous response, and uh, I still have that problem, is this first cycle. This theory applies for these three cycles here, you know, second, third, and fourth cycle. But this theory doesn't really work for the first cycle. And what I mean is, he starts the theory with 328,454%. And if you start with that number, everything lines up perfectly. We got 60,873 in his chart. I got 60,509. In fact, I am closer than he is to the uh, amount that we should be getting if we start with 328,000%. Uh, this is the first cycle and uh, I'm not even starting it from the beginning. I had to start it from somewhere here so that I can get a little bit closer to his number because we, if we start from zero, if we start from the very beginning, we are actually looking at uh, 4 million 679,179%. 4,679,179. This is from zero. And then if we only change it by one cent, this is why I had to be so precise, even one cent difference, like this price here is zero, this price is one cent. And you can already see the difference, 291,000 from uh, 4 million. Do you see the difference between one cent? Because at these price levels, one cent is a huge difference between zero and one. Um, I would argue that we should probably begin counting from somewhere here, which is still around zero. But I mean, we can't really see the digits here because we are below one cent, but we are in the small digits. We are not exactly at zero here. And this is 906 thousand percent and if we input 906 thousand percent and divide it by 5.3 we are not getting anywhere this theory falls apart immediately if we are starting from this point so it's really a matter of uh, just adjusting this number here adjusting your cycle according to what you want it to be so that your theory can work and that's not really how it works with mathematics because he's talking about hard facts or facts, as he says, hard facts, but this is not a hard facts, right? And even here, if we go to this drop, because if we go in the daily, we're going to see that there was a little bit of a correction. Let me go here and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the daily chart. If we go here and we look closely, this week even though it's just a week so it happened in one day we had this crash of bitcoin from six cents all the way down to one cent and this is at the time when so few people were trading bitcoin that i don't even know whether we can count this as a proper cycle because we don't even have enough uh, people trading this to call it a proper trade but uh, this is if we assume that this is some sort of a bottom here and we go to the next top of the market, which is uh, at this point here, this price point of 31.91. This is 310,595%. Let's input this number. This is the closest I can get to his number, guys. And this is me uh, literally adjusting it only so that I can get his number. But this is not really a proper cycle. Nonetheless, let's go here, 310. 595 divided by 5.3 is 58,602. And what is our next cycle? It's 62,284. So you can say close, but I mean, we're talking here of a few thousand percentage points. So we're not close. A thousand, you know, a couple of thousand or 4,000 percentage points. That's a huge difference, guys. So that is why I'm saying that this theory doesn't work because yes, it worked for the last three cycles, but it didn't really work for the first one. And just as it did not work for the first cycle, it could just as well not work in this last cycle. 
it means that the theory is not solid, it is not universal, it does not apply always, it applies sometimes, maybe every other cycle, maybe it applies for three cycles in a row, and then it doesn't apply for the next cycle, and then it might apply for the next three cycles, and then it wouldn't apply for the next fourth cycle. There could be some sort of a pattern to this theory, I'm not saying that it's completely nonsense, but just as it did not work for the first cycle, it could not work for this cycle as well. And this is why I don't believe in this theory, and for me, it is not solid enough to actually take it into account. All right, well, I think I made myself quite clear. You know that I disagree with that theory now, and it's all based on the fact that the first cycle was incorrectly estimated. And from that point, the theory only works if you adjust things according to the theory rather than the other way around. Now, let me show you, as I promised, an indicator that has always worked, and um, this is called the Pi indicator. I actually dedicated a separate video to the Pi indicator two or three years ago, uh, but of course this was quite some time ago, so I'm not gonna make you go and look for it. You will probably find quite a few videos on YouTube about the Pi indicator. In its core, this is an indicator that we mainly use to find the cycle tops, not cycle bottoms, and not the duration of a cycle. So it's not going to show you years in advance uh, what the price, the top price might be, but that is not necessary. As long as you keep track on this indicator regularly, you will see when the market top is happening. Now this is back in 2013. This uh, indicator, as you can see, we're looking here at uh, two moving averages, the green and the red line. We are looking at a cross when the red line goes above the green line. This is all we care about. And as you can see here, we had a market stop in 2013, and that indicator, the lines crossed just as the top occurred. But do not try to mark the absolute top. You're good if you catch the price on the way down in the first days after a market top, and this is exactly what this indicator is going to help you with. So this is back in 2013. This here is back in 2017. We again, we reached a top here in December 2017, and the two lines, the red line crossed above the green line just in the same week. In fact, it was really precise this time. It was pretty much a day or two before the actual top, so it could act as a warning, but um, that's not always the case. This is a zoomed in screenshot of the same chart in 2017. You can see here 19,614 exactly on the 17th of December was the top of that market. On the same day, as we marked this cross between the two moving averages, we actually printed the top of this market. So, as I'm saying, this is a very correct indicator, very precise. This is in 2021. So, 2021 was a little bit different. We did have a double top in 2021, but the indicator marked the first top of the market, which was at around 64,000. So, this is when the moving averages crossed. This was our warning that we are reaching a market top. Now, if you didn't believe that, you could have waited and then you saw this kind of a uh, fake rally. We did rally again. We tried to go higher. The, there was a lot of hype, a lot of bullish sentiment in the market at that time. So, the buyers stepped in. They thought, oh, this is just a minor correction on the market and we are continuing the bull rally to 320,000, which is what BitBoy was talking about and many other influencers were fooling people that we are going above uh, 150, uh, above 200K and all of that. I was talking about 80,000, by the way, and I was wrong as well, but I was much closer than uh, all of the other, uh, you know, YouTubers. Nonetheless, this marked our market top. And even though retail investors didn't believe that and they continued buying Bitcoin, they tried to push the price higher. And indeed, we went a little bit higher. We went to 68,000 or 69,000, something like that. So a little bit higher than uh, the market top as indicated by the Pi indicator. However, we failed with that rally. This was a fake out. This was a, a, an attempt of the buyers to go higher and they failed. Ultimately, we printed a double top after which we started. And I've taken this screenshot a long time ago, so this is why the chart only ends here in May 2022. But as you know, we actually went through a whole bear market in 2022 and we ended uh, around December 2022. This indicator 
even though here it marks our market stop a little bit earlier and uh, buyers continued buying after that and tried to go above it and tried to cancel that indicator yet again it was very correct if you had sold at around 64,000, you would have been very happy and you can see here the big sell-offs that happened here we dropped from 60 to 44,000 in a day or in two days because I am on the daily chart here and these are just two candles. So in two days, we dropped quite significantly. So um, definitely, this is an indicator that you can pull up on uh, TradingView and it is a free indicator. It is very correct so far. As I said, every market top, it managed to mark, not predict necessarily because it's not doing it ahead of time, but it is marking it as it happens pretty much in real time. So this for me is a much more uh, trusted indicator, something that I will be looking out for during this bull cycle to find where is going to be my selling point. And as soon as I see that cross of the red line going above the green line, this is my signal to sell and exit all positions. And when I'm saying all positions, yes, I would still keep some Bitcoin for the long term. I never really exit all of my Bitcoin, but I do exit all of my altcoins. And I always say that, guys, even though uh, this is not really a, an investment advice or trading advice or anything, it's none of this is financial advice, but still. I always exit altcoins when I see that we are starting a bear market because during a bear market, altcoins drop by more than 80%, 90%, 99%, many of them, I would say the majority of them actually go down by 99%. And that's not something that I want to write down. Um, I prefer to stay in stable coins, maybe even some fiat at this time. And this is what I did over the last bear market and even the previous bear market. I mean, the previous bear market, actually, I still had some outcomes that I didn't manage to sell. So I was holding on to those. But during the last bear market, 2022, I didn't have any outcomes besides Ethereum. Ethereum was the only out in my portfolio. So uh, this is what I'm doing. I hope this is not really an advice, but hopefully my experience as I'm sharing it here with you on this channel is helping you as well. And if it does that, show your support, leave a like, also leave a comment below. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this 5.3 theory. Do you agree with it? Do you think that it's actually not really that accurate? And also let me know if you have any questions or any suggestions for other topics that you want me to cover. This will help me create better content for you guys. Thanks for staying until the end of the video. Make sure to check out the links in the description below where I drop the links to all of the crypto services that I'm using and that I recommend to you. And also my crypto newsletter, which is a, a twice a month crypto newsletter. I'm sharing in market insights and things that don't really get into the videos here on this video podcast. So it's definitely different content to the one that I'm uh, posting here and uh, they're for free and I never charge for any of my content. So you can scan the QR code over here or you can grab the link from the description below. And uh, that's it from me. Thanks for staying again until the end of the video. It's much appreciated. And also, if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you know when I'm posting a new video. And I'm gonna see you in the next one.